So in the spirit of the last story, which was about Frog and Toad, and when Toad loses his button, we decided we're going to read Corduroy to you. Can you hold that down for just a second? So Isaac is going to read in his book, and I'm going to read in my book. Here, show your book. Do you have a book too? Yeah, we all, both have the same book, so we're going to... Sometimes we have two books so that we can follow yeah. along real good. I'll show you. you ready? I'll show you guys the picture. Okay. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. Good job, Isaac. You want to turn the page? Yeah. Next, we're going to read page six. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Where's, where's Corduroy in that picture? Do you see him in this picture? Oh, there he is. Next page. Yep, show this. Show that picture. Yeah, I see him. Okay, there he is. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy! She said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Uh-oh. Can you show that picture of how he lost one of his buttons? Okay, then turn the page. This is a sad page. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. Why is Corduroy sad? I see. Because they didn't buy him. Because they didn't buy him. Yeah, he looks very sad. Who else is sad in that picture? Sheep. Who else is sad? Who's who's Sheep. who else is sad? The little girl. Yeah. Now we're gonna read this page. I didn't know I had lost a button. He said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. So here, he's, he is not going to be daunted. He is going to solve his problem. Isn't that good? That's good. Let's turn the page. On page 10. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. So he's very clever. See, he figured out how to get off the shelf, and he is looking for his button. He is determined he's going to solve that problem, huh? Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator, and up he went. There he is going up the escalator. Could this be a mountain, he wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. There's a song about that. The bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain to see what he could do. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace. Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. Is this a palace? Do you think that's a palace? No. No, it's a store. But it's very funny. He thinks it's a palace. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to see what happens next. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And he crawled up onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here is my button, he cried. And he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattresses, on the mattress, it was tied down tight. 
that his is that his button? No. No, that belongs to the mattress. Well, I think it is good that he you know, he had a misfortune that nobody wanted to buy him, but now he gets to go exploring. So that's fun. Oh my, look what happens on this page. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang! Into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Oh, he's doing, he's covering his ears. Apparently that was a loud noise. He covered his ears. He said, ouch, that hurts. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Who's he going to find? Now, who in the world did that? He exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. Well, he thinks it's... A, who does the night watchman think it could be? Oh, he found somebody. Somebody is hiding. Who does the watchman think, think that is, Isaac? Who does the watchman think made that big noise? Mm. Maybe a burglar. He thinks it could be a burglar, huh? Is it a burglar? Yeah. No. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator. <laughs> and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. And a clown. When I was little, I had a toy clown. Mm -hmm. I had one named Blinky, and he had a what? nose that blinked. Why do you want him by this? Well, hold on a second. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank and my mother said, I could bring you home. Oh. Look, why is he not by this turtle? Look, they're all happy for him. They're, look, the bunny is setting him off. The bunny looks like he's petting him on the back. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you. Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She didn't need a box because she carried him home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Aww. Yeah. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. Oh, look, she's been waiting for him, and she got him a bed that's just the right size for him. Aw, the room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. I, this must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button That's on his a overalls. Much more better bed. That's a much better bed, yeah. And even though the other place was bigger, I mean, this like, one is home. I, I mean, a much better picture. Yeah. Um, I like you just the way you are, she said. 
but you'll be more comfortable with your st shoulder strap fastened. Oh, look, more sewing of buttons. This is why we're having a theme today, today with the buttons. Isn't that nice of her to help him out? Oh, boy. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. Oh, oh show the a big picture. hug. Isn't that nice? What a great story. And I did. I made it through the whole story, and I didn't cry. Hooray. That's just such a sweet story. I love it that he says, I've always wanted a home. I've always wanted a friend. It's terrific. I like that he's got such a positive attitude the whole time. Mm-hmm.